My name is Jin Lee and I'm the founder of Kokova. So I basically oversee everything from production to operations to marketing to sales, uh, business strategy. Yeah, we're very we're a very small team right now. Um, it's actually just myself and another intern, and that's it. The two of us running the whole thing. So I spent the first 15 years of my career uh, in the media industry. I was uh, working with Astro and also some other uh, production studios. A big part of my career was in TV production, where I worked as a TV director doing live shows. Um, such as reality shows and competitions. And then I moved into content creation where I worked on um, children's content. So I was coming with story ideas for cartoons. Yeah, so moving into Kokova is a very big uh, change for me. It's a completely new industry. I do not have any experience uh, dealing with uh, food products or uh, how to, you know, like how to market it. But um, actually, the, the skills that you pick up along the way, they do kind of interrelate. Um, communication skills, interpersonal skills, uh, persuasion, negotiation skills, uh, even marketing skills is a different product. I used to work on children content. Now I'm working on chocolates. But um, understanding your target market and uh, your consumers, it's, it's still a similar, uh, similar pattern that you can bring forward from the previous industry. Working in Astro and then I had decided that it was a time like it was time for me to move on uh, and I was job hunting at the time. I wasn't thinking of starting a business at all. But then uh, as fate would have it, I met my ex-partner and then we both felt like a common passion. We had a common passion about chocolates and we both felt that we couldn't find any good hot chocolates in cafes. So we felt like uh, maybe there is a market there and we wanted to do something about it. So we both quit our jobs and started Kokova. We did a lot of research at the beginning. We ran a lot of surveys. Uh, we did focus groups. We did a lot of R&D. We had friends and target our target market coming in to do a blind test to, to make sure we got our products really right. And then when we finally launched, we our strategy was to launch during Christmas because we knew that chocolates would be very good for gift sets during Christmas. That's how we started basically selling at bazaars and flea markets uh, during the whole Christmas period and they were very very well received. It was good to see a lot of encouragement from our customers and a lot of great feedback and so that gave us the confidence to continue on and pursue further and then from there uh, from bazaars now we have our own website. Um, we're also selling on Shopee and Lazada and we are also in retailers and uh, such as Cura Gosa, uh, the Hive Bug Foods, um, MPH, uh, just to name a few. And um, we've been featured in quite a few articles, so we've been very, very blessed. And also, uh, we are now supplying to some cafes as well. So we have a few different target audiences, right? Because our business is both B2B and B2C. Um, for B2B, like I mentioned earlier, we cater to retailers, grocery stores, and cafes. So mainly those that are focused with on the health end because our products, our chocolates are basically healthy chocolates. Um, they are low in sugar. We do not have any artificial ingredients. And um, we basically focus on like natural ingredients, right? So uh, the retailers and the cafes that we work with are towards the end as well. And then as for the consumer end, we directly cater to consumer through our website. So these are people primarily within the age group of 25 to 45 who are slightly more health conscious uh, because as I mentioned, our products are catering to the health market. So primarily women, uh, they consume more chocolates than men. So that's our main target market. Women aged between 25 to 45 who are slightly uh, more health conscious. For myself, like just to name a few would be funding resources, uh, finding the right talent, um, you know, trying to market to the right crowd and getting to build that brand awareness. 
uh, because as a new brand, it's actually very challenging, very hard to build that brand awareness amongst your target market. And in terms of funding as well, I I basically started this with my own savings, and it's not enough to like I don't have the big budgets to hire a big team or to you know put in like do a lot of ads. So those are just some challenges that I'm learning to manage. My advice would be plan, definitely plan, do your research, um, identify your target market and speak to them, right? Really speak to them, understand what are their pain points and what is it that you can offer to help them solve their pain points. Um, a lot of times we may have an idea in mind, but it may not be the right idea or the right solution for the target market. So um, don't just jump straight into your idea, but try and understand your target market first. And then from there, you can always tweak, fine tune your idea along the way. Uh, another thing would be to take action. Like it's good to do all this research and speak to your target market, but there, there needs to be a time when you start acting on it as well. So I also know of people who spend too much time researching and and like two years later, it's still in the research phase. So like you will never see uh, fruition until you actually take action. So give yourself a deadline and work towards it. And like if the deadline comes, take action, even though your research is not complete, even though your product is not perfect, just launch it, right? Because when you can always tweak it along the way, which is what we did, right? So we launched first and then we did the bazaars and then we spoke to customers, we got some feedback and then we, we further tweak, we uh, changed our packaging, we're, we're still making tweaks along the way, but at least it's out there. Um, it was only like 90% there, but we just launched it first. Yeah, because that's the biggest step.